I'm bringing 10 colleagues home for an after party, so get things ready. You're in the late stages of pregnancy, but you can handle this much, right? A few women will be joining, so please prepare some sweets they'll enjoy. While raising two-year-old twins, I, in the later stages of pregnancy, was feeling at my limit. My husband had no interest in childcare and firmly believed household chores and child rearing were a woman's job. When he made this sudden request, I had no choice but to refuse, explaining it was too much. He became furious, accusing me of tarnishing his reputation as a man. Reluctantly, I prepared everything, put the twins to bed, and lay down in their room myself. Five hours later, a drunk colleague mistakenly entered the room, visibly shocked. I didn't know you had young kids and a pregnant wife. Were you deceiving us? He confronted my husband, raising his fist in anger. At that moment, my husband's words turned what should have been a fun after party into chaos. I married my husband when I was 28. Our relationship progressed quickly from meeting to marriage. I couldn't quit my job immediately and promised to hand over my duties and resign once pregnant. My husband always wanted me to be a homemaker. We didn't plan specifically but naturally tried for a baby, enjoying a typical newlywed life for the first year. When I found out I was pregnant before turning 30, I kept my promise and quit to focus on the family. Learning of the twins, my husband was overjoyed to become a father of two at once, eagerly telling everyone our family would grow livelier. Given the twin pregnancy, I was recommended a precautionary hospital stay. My husband supported this, preferring to be prepared rather than regretting later. However, I was worried about how things would be at home since he was almost entirely incapable of household chores. My in-laws suggested either my mother-in-law regularly checking in on my husband or him staying at their place. Eventually, he stayed with his parents until I was discharged. I safely gave birth to twins via C-section. On the discharge day, both our families were there, making it a big celebration. Even the nurses commented on how happy our family seemed. However, when I got home, my husband's behavior suddenly changed. I like visiting my parents, but my mother is so nagging that it's uncomfortable. I guess there's no place like home after all. I had thought that both our parents would be coming home with us, but they showed consideration by saying, let's cherish this rare family time. In the end, his parents went back to their home and mine to a hotel. Then, he handed me his bags, complaining of a sore shoulder. The only saving grace was that he carried one of the twins. But once home, he casually placed the baby he was holding onto the sofa and relaxed, simply uttering my nudity. I responded, could you fix the baby's bed before having tea? Despite the pain from my abdominal incision, I ended up preparing the baby's sleeping area. This was a sign of my husband's indifference to childcare. The next day, my parents visited our home early in the morning. You'll probably put the kids first and neglect yourselves, my mother said, drawing from her own experience. She was right. I was so busy caring for the babies and my husband that I neglected my own needs. As noon approached, my in-laws also visited. Having seen my mother doing various things, they seemed to have decided to understand and help with the challenges of raising twins. From that day, childcare began with support from both our parents. My father and father-in-law still had work, and neither my mother nor mother-in-law could focus solely on the twins. Additionally, as my family lived far away, regular support was challenging, leading to inevitable reliance on my in-laws. They adored the twins and advised me not to rush and to take things easy without pointing out my shortcomings. Their words of encouragement saying, the children are teaching you what it means to be a mother now. There's no need to regret what you can't do. We're incredibly supportive. On weekends, my mother would come from afar to help. And during the week, my mother-in-law provided daytime support. It can be hard for fathers to actively engage in childcare, 
but once they start, they might find it surprisingly enjoyable, my father-in-law remarked, recalling his own experience with childcare. It suggested that my husband's reluctance might stem from embarrassment or fear of failure. My father also reminisced, I was very nervous the first time I took the child out. Even when I talk about my father-in-law or my own father, my husband shows no interest and just responds with a disinterested oh really? Worse yet, he displays a terribly selfish attitude when my parents aren't around, eventually even pushing my in-laws to their breaking point. He once complained about being hungry and asked isn't dinner ready yet? While I was breastfeeding our twins, he even demanded a proper meal instead of the usual ready-to-eat ones, saying, You're a housewife, you should be able to do at least that much. I'd use ready-to-eat meals occasionally, but that seems to frustrate him. Using them seems to equate to me neglecting my homemaking duties in his eyes. I told him, if you're hungry, you're an adult, find something to eat. The babies can't feed themselves, you know? You could easily prepare formula milk. Why don't you help with that instead of expecting her to cook? He was initially shocked and wide-eyed when my in-laws scolded him, not expecting it. He argued, if I start cooking, what will she do as a full-time homemaker? Plus, if I do the feeding, I'd be taking away the mother's role. My in-laws and I were dumbfounded and exclaimed in unison, what? What followed was a lecture from my mother-in-law and some basic parenting guidance from my father-in-law. My husband reluctantly helped out, sulking till the end. Over the next two years, he often left home for work to avoid childcare in front of my parents. However, in front of his parents, no excuses worked, and he was forced to participate in childcare, albeit reluctantly. This routine continued for a while. During my next pregnancy, I suffered from severe morning sickness as the symptoms were pronounced. Thanks to my in-law's guidance, my husband began to understand my suffering and actively involved himself in household and child care duties. However, he gradually started making excuses to avoid housework, especially when the meals he made were subpar. That seemed to be the last straw. Everyone makes mistakes, and I tried to eat with gratitude, but I couldn't finish it due to feeling sick. He took this as a sign of my dissatisfaction and felt inappreciated. Once he started slacking off, it became harder for him to make an effort, and his willingness to help faded within a month. Nowadays, holidays have naturally become time for his hobbies, and it's become the norm to return home late on weekdays due to work and social obligations. Sometimes, I don't even see my husband for the whole day. I've expressed a wish for him to come home earlier or at least stay home on one of the weekends. It's not that I really need him to take care of me. I'd be satisfied if he just helped with the twins. You've been parenting for two years. You should be used to it. Besides, this is the second childbirth, and this time it's just one child, so there's nothing I can do my husband said and left the house to spend his leisure time. Lately, our two-year-old twins have become sensitive to our behavior. They seem to sense something from the way my husband talks and my facial expressions, and when one starts crying, the other soon follows. Unconsciously, signs of disappointment escape from me. In such a situation, I wonder why I ended up pregnant with a third child. That's the only question I could ask myself. Despite my husband's lack of involvement in parenting, he does occasionally show a kind side to me. When he seeks intimacy, I feel reassured of his love and give in, even though his displeasure pains me when I refuse. Looking back, it seems this vicious cycle has led to our current situation. I don't feel animosity toward the child in my womb. I'm glad for its existence. However, somewhere inside, I felt that now wasn't the right time. Yet, as my belly grows and the child inside starts moving, I feel a precious love for this life. Gently stroking my growing belly, I tell the baby, sorry for being a cowardly mom. Become strong and come out healthy. Eventually, it was decided that my next delivery would also be a C-section. 
I needed to be admitted to the hospital on a scheduled date and prepare in advance. But above all, I was worried about taking care of the twins while I was hospitalized. So I desperately needed my husband's cooperation. I couldn't ask him to take time off work, but I suggested that he help out at least during the night. However, he argued, I can't make such a promise now since my work schedule isn't fixed. Besides, taking time off for your wife's delivery isn't my taste. But I've reached my limit of patience. I was about to retort when my husband cut me off for the dinner time before I could even speak. Let's drop it. If two-year-olds get hungry, they'll eat on their own. Really? Then an adult over 30 should be able to independently manage their meals even more than a toddler, right? Come on, show the kids how it's done. I'm fine with this. I'm the one earning so you all can eat. You should be grateful and cook for me, got it? What he's saying is utterly unreasonable. As my belly grows, the strain on my back increases and my movements slow. Despite this, my husband criticizes me for being slow and unmotivated, further berating my homemaking skills. His recent refrain is, I'm the one feeding you all. Feeding us? I wanted us to both work, but he insisted women should stay home, forcing me into full-time homemaking when I got pregnant. I might have ultimately agreed, but I still resent being told he's feeding me. However, at 36 weeks pregnant, my movements slowed further and his criticisms grew harsher. His uncompassionate words anger me, but I fear for my own health if I retaliate. So I've stayed silent, enduring his callous words. As my 38th week approach us, with a C-section scheduled, he says, think again about the caserine. Last time it was twins, so it was necessary, but this time it's just one. Natural birth might feel more real. He understands nothing. Bringing life into the world is inherently risky. His opinions and fixations are pointless. He accuses me of choosing K. Serene to avoid housework, as if someone would make that decision just to escape chores. I can't fathom his logic. Still, I've patiently explained the risks to mother and child, and he could even hear it directly from the doctor. But he refuses to listen, asking, why should I waste my time hearing about Kayserines just because your explanation is poor? You're the one giving birth. Even though I was accused of choosing Kayserine just to slack off, I tried to explain the real reasons behind it. Even so, he decided it was none of his concern and interrupted the conversation. As the day of my hospitalization approached, I tried to make my husband understand, wanting to avoid any disruptions from him. But he lashed out, calling me annoying, and the conversation ended. Then one day, unusually, I received a call from my husband. He instructed, prepare dinner for 10 people, we're hosting an after party at home. And don't forget desserts that the women will like. Before having children, I used to enjoy these home parties with my husband's colleagues. It was a time when I could see an unknown side of him and have a good time with his colleagues. However, after becoming pregnant, their visits became less frequent, and especially after the twins were born, they stopped altogether. According to my husband, they declined, citing the twins as the reason. It seems his colleagues were being considerate by avoiding drinking at a home with young twins. The twins are just two years old and need constant attention. It's hard to understand why his normally considerate colleagues would decide to come in such a large group now. I'm about to be hospitalized, and with the high chance of labor, I'm in no condition to suddenly prepare a meal for guests. I told my husband, if you discussed it earlier, it might be different, but I can't handle such a sudden request in my current state. Go out and drink, even if it costs a bit more. He often spends generously on colleagues and subordinates, not shying away from using money. It might be about keeping up appearances, but he's spent tens of thousands in one night on drinks before. I pleaded, expect to spend that much this time too, but please don't bring anyone home. But he got angry. 
I've already decided to host it at home. Are you trying to embarrass me? He insisted, a wife should protect her husband's honor and a wife should just obey. Stubbornly demanding, bring them, make it. With no energy left to resist, I thought it'd be quicker to comply and started preparing the meal. Going out of shop was difficult, so I decided to manage with what we had at home and prepare dinner for 10. The extra supplies I'd stored for emergencies came in handy, but I'll have to go shopping again tomorrow after using them all up tonight. I wonder if I'll be able to go shopping tomorrow. While I was preparing the meal, I began to feel a strange sensation in my stomach. My husband had instructed me to spend some quiet time in the room with the twins after I finished cooking. I followed his directive. As I was putting the twins to bed, my husband returned home with ten of his colleagues. Their noise woke the twins, but I whispered to them to be quiet and put them back to sleep. I sighed with relief when I confirmed the twins were sleeping soundly again. That's when I noticed the pain in my stomach was getting worse. I covered my mouth with both hands to stifle my voice and curled up small. However, the pain gradually intensified and I felt the situation worsening. Suddenly, the door to the room opened. Sorry, my mistake, someone said, seemingly having mistaken the room for the bathroom while drunk. There I was in the room with the sleeping twins and in pain. Despite my suffering, I managed to suppress the slight sounds escaping from me and told them to enjoy themselves without worrying about me. It was someone I had known for a while. Don't worry about it. He stuttered, then left the room, leaving me and the twins behind. From the living room, I could hear his angry voice. Man, what are you doing leaving young kids and a wife alone? And clearly, she's pregnant, right? From the size of her belly, it must be soon, right? What do you mean by that? I thought they understood the situation when they came. I wondered what had suddenly changed, as they had been considerate before. Perhaps they had joked about it, and my husband had taken it seriously. Once he had accepted it, there was no turning back. And out of concern for appearances, my husband must have demanded this, even if it meant showing anger. However, listening to the colleague's conversation, I didn't feel any of that. The colleague had been refusing to go to a house with young children. In other words, my husband had been trying to invite a colleague who kept refusing to come to our home. The colleague felt sorry for having come to a house with young children and a pregnant woman late at night. So why did this situation happen? The colleague explained the reason. My kids and wife were at my parents' place, and I was home alone, so he said there was no need to hold back. Believing his words, ten of his colleagues decided to visit our house. I thought if I hid, it wouldn't be discovered, but now that it's come to light, it can't be helped. She always finds various reasons to avoid housework, saying she's busy taking care of the twins, or she's pregnant or near giving birth. She needs to at least do the cooking. So, I made her prepare food for 10 people at once. Considering how much she's been slacking, it's only fair. My husband said this with confidence as if his actions were completely justified. You made her cook, and for 10 people at this late hour, an abnormal voice echoed, and curious, I stepped out of the room. I didn't know what my enraged husband might do next. There are people who behave like tyrants at home but act politely in public. I can't say for certain if my husband is one of them, but from what I've seen of him at home, his current actions were unpredictable. When I peeked into the living room, I saw one of the colleagues grabbing my husband by the collar. Other colleagues, also angry, were admonishing him for going too far in his drunken state. However, the angry colleague, while explaining the reasons for his anger, continued to scold my husband. Seeing this, other colleagues began to look at my husband with dubious expressions. Several colleagues who had children the same age as the twins were also disparaging my husband, saying, Unbelievable. A female colleague said, if I were in that position, I would never forgive such an act. He's the worst husband. 
Suggestions to disperse early were raised. At least let's clean up a bit, said someone, starting to move. After being criticized as a terrible husband and father, my husband's once arrogant demeanor vanished, and he became small, unable to retort. Some colleagues, noticing me, apologized. As I settled onto a nearby sofa, I realized that the pain in my stomach was becoming regular. Convinced it was labor pains, I called for help from my husband, who was still being scolded, but he didn't respond. Noticing my distress, one colleague asked, should we call the hospital? I nodded, and he immediately handed me the home phone. After contacting the hospital myself, I received instructions to come in immediately, so I decided to leave. My hospital bag was already prepared in the bedroom, but my body wouldn't move as I wished, and I couldn't stand up. His female colleague offered to go and fetch my things if she could be allowed into the room, so I gratefully accepted her offer. The truth is, I was surprised that labor started at this time of night. My husband seems to be mentally down and not much help, and I hesitated to call my in-laws to look after the twins at this hour. I wished so many times that my own parents lived closer. If it were my own parents, I could have asked for help without any hesitation. My husband said, go to the hospital alone. If you call an ambulance, tell them to come without the siren. It would be embarrassing if the neighbors found out. After all, it's your fault that the mood was killed. So take responsibility. The mood was killed because his lies were exposed. I followed my husband's instructions and stayed quietly locked in my room. Lies will eventually come to light, especially men's lies, which often have many gaps. I wanted to point out that my husband was reaping what he sowed, but I was worried that getting emotional might worsen my condition. As I was holding back my emotions, suddenly, a sound like something being struck echoed through the room. Looking in the direction of the noise, I saw a colleague of my husband striking him down. I never thought you were such a person lacking in decency. Giving birth is a matter of life and death. How could you do this? I've never even been hit by my own parents. While it felt like a line I'd heard somewhere before, I was shocked that someone would actually say such a thing. Moreover, his pride seemed utterly shredded and his face was beach-red with embarrassment. His ears were red too, and he looked deeply humiliated. Asking someone who doesn't understand pain for compassion is an unreasonable request. Listen, the pain your wife is feeling is beyond measure. Why am I the only one being blamed? I'm not wrong. After all, I'm the one supporting the family. My husband argued that the public humiliation was my fault and insisted he had done nothing wrong. He was shouting at the colleague who had hit him that he would sue for assault. However, the colleagues no longer paid any attention to what my husband was saying. Sue so if you want to, they said while others asked me what they should do to help. With all this commotion, the twins woke up. Moreover, they were terrified by the shouting adults and strangers and began to cry violently. I was already overwhelmed with my own situation, and now I had to soothe the crying twins, which just added to my exhaustion. In this situation, I realized that a foolish husband who prioritizes his pride over everything else is no longer needed. Just when I was reluctantly considering asking my in-laws for help, a male colleague with children and a female colleague offered to help take care of my twins. Desperate, I gratefully accepted their offer. The woman reassured me that she's used to taking care of her nieces and nephews, and the man, whose children are around the same age, offered his support. I informed them that the kids' room has plenty of toys and that they're free to use any food in the house as the kids have no allergies. I also mentioned that my mother-in-law was planning to come the next morning, but I tried to get her to come earlier if possible. Another colleague who had experience with childbirth suggested that taking a taxi would be faster. However, I couldn't catch a taxi right away. Then, a colleague contacted a subordinate who wasn't at the gathering and lived nearby. He rushed over upon hearing the situation. 
The subordinate, a father himself, was urged by his wife to hurry over without wasting time on explanations. Even if it was a made-up story, I was truly touched by their thoughtfulness. Despite my husband's attempts to justify himself, my colleagues and I completely ignored him. One of the subordinate colleagues drove me to the hospital and stayed with me. The female colleague got out of the car with me and offered to stay until my parents and in-laws arrived. She took over contacting them, and I was immensely grateful. I was concerned about her work the next day, but she assured me, no problem, I'll be here, and stayed until the in-laws arrived. My parents, who lived far away, didn't make it for the casering section but were relieved to know the mother and child were safe. However, the real drama started later. My in-laws and my parents initially suspected my husband of infidelity when they learned that his colleague had contacted them. They were curious about the circumstances but prioritized rushing over. Once at the hospital and learning the full story, they were astonished by the truth, which was far beyond an affair. With my husband absent, the in-laws assumed he was taking care of the twins. They were somewhat relieved to know that even with the female colleague present, if my husband was looking after the kids, he was fulfilling his role as a father. In reality, despite leaving the care of our twins to colleagues and making me, who was close to giving birth, prepare meals for 10 people, my husband insisted he did nothing wrong. My in-laws came to apologize to me and my parents for his neglect. They suggested I be safer with my parents and hurry to our home. The scene my in-laws witnessed was unbelievable. Of my husband's 10 colleagues, aside from the two who had offered to help with the twins, the rest had gone home. In the midst of the after-party cleanup, my husband sulked in a corner nursing a can of beer. My mother-in-law, feeling sorry, gave the remaining colleagues taxi fare and a little extra, expressing her apologies and gratitude. Although it wasn't about the money, it was the only way she could express her thanks and regret at that moment. Later, my in-laws apologized and thanked all of my husband's colleagues who were present. When it was just my husband-in-laws and the twins, my mother-in-law took the twins out for a walk probably to avoid them seeing their father being scolded. Upon returning, my husband's cheek was more swollen, presumably from a severe reprimand from my father-in-law. Despite this, he continued to justify his actions and showed no signs of remorse until I returned home with our third child. However, he complied with the minimum in front of his parents. It seems my father-in-law's reprimand deeply affected him but once they left, he reverted to his usual self. With two-year-old twins and a newborn, I couldn't catch a break, but my husband kept making demands. He blamed his being hit by my father-in-law and my inadequacies as a wife. I decided to divorce, informing both our parents. My parents fully supported the decision, and even before I was discharged, they had advised me to return to their home. Even my in-laws, acknowledging their son's trouble, supported the divorce. But my husband was strongly opposed and wouldn't accept it easily. He discussed the divorce with his colleagues, who were surprised I hadn't asked for one sooner and supported my decision. As a result, my husband became isolated at work, and rumors spread that there was some trouble at a secondary party he held at home. The source of the rumors was unclear but the fact that several people, including my husband, were absent or late the day after the party fueled the gossip. Additionally, since my in-laws had apologized to his colleagues, there was speculation in the office about what he might have done. Amidst this, news of my safe delivery spread among his colleagues, leading the curious ones to speculate that something might have gone wrong during the birth. The rumors that spread were quite fitting, and my husband began to be scorned by his colleagues and subordinates. Gradually, his work mistakes became more noticeable, and he resigned due to the discomfort. It was then that he seemed to realize the seriousness of his actions. 
At first, he angrily agreed to a divorce, but after losing his job and returning to his parents' house, he tearfully pleaded for a reconsideration, realizing the peace he had with me. However, our house was already gone, and I had returned to my parents to focus on raising our child with their support. I couldn't afford to spend time on a man who had discarded us. Later, unable to find a job, my husband was also evicted from his parents' home. Jobless and pressured by child support and alimony payments for my mental distress, he took any job he could find. He paid his debts but lived a life chased by repayments. Now, he works a grueling job, with most of his earnings going towards his debts. Meanwhile, I've been in touch with my in-laws and his former colleagues, even arranging meetups for the twins who wish to see them. At the time, I wondered why they gathered for a secondary party, but except for my husband, everyone was genuinely understanding, and I feel happy now thanks to them. We have deepened our relationships through mutual interaction, sharing the struggles and joys of parenting. My in-laws have been of great help, and the twins are fond of them. A good relationship has been established between my parents and my in-laws, who regularly visit to see the twins and their new grandchild. I'm reminded that life is supported by cooperation and help from others, and I'm determined never to forget the gratitude I felt then and to continue striving for an even happier life with my beloved family.